Folks, we're back in the snaky pulpit tonight as opposed to the bully pulpit. These are western diamondback rattlesnakes. They have venom. They're very, very toxic and dangerous. But I believe in putting my life on the line to prove that America has some very, very important, critical decisions to make in this election. We have to vote conservative. You're not voting for a particular man. The party's turned out one, but I don't belong to any party. I vote the man, but I'm voting against the man that's in there now. And uh, let me show you real quick, as I promised last time, that uh, these snakes have their venom. And we'll check this guy out and see what he's got here real quick, all right? Let's just cooperate. Okay, let's see if he's got some venom here. Ready? You'll see the two fangs. Orange juice colored venom will come out of there. Ah, uh, yes. He's got a lot of venom in there. They've not been milked at all. And therefore, we're trying to make a point. It's not about me, not about the snakes. It's about the message that we have here today. Okay, let's keep going on the snaky pulpit and the things we have to say in our message tonight. Uh, in part of my career, I was the president of the National Association of Counties job grants where we had Department of Labor money to create jobs when unemployment was only 7%. That was too high back then by definition. We created hundreds of thousands of jobs during my tenure uh, for under $3,000 a piece all across the country. It's not that hard. We used all kinds of techniques in the law and uh, transitioned to three different statutes to allow us to spend that money for job creation. I think I saw some figures where each of the jobs in the stimulus package cost nearly half a million dollars. They weren't shovel-ready jobs. They weren't permanent jobs. I don't know where the money went. Uh, I've never seen a report from the General Accounting Office or anyone else, some kind of audit trail, saying, who got the money? Nearly a trillion dollars. Where did it go? It didn't create jobs. I've only heard a handful of jobs. And look at all the boondoggle projects we spent it on. That was our national treasure. We've been gutted. We've been duped, tricked, and stolen from. Somebody needs to pay for that. Anyway, jobs, jobs, jobs. That's what it's really all about. If we get the private sector to sizzling and smoking, get our jobs back in America, get the factories rolling, we'll have plenty of money to pay taxes without raising taxes because new production, new valuations, new taxable places and production will get us all the money we need. We've proven that over and over again with different presidents over the years. Why do we want to tax? We want to tax to get more people on the entitlement programs. We can't afford entitlement. Private sector is under horrible attack right now. We need to do just the opposite. We need to reduce the regulations, lower the corporate taxes, give them more hands-off freedom to be creative like the American ingenuity, the ability for America to be creative and productive like no other country, no other people on this earth. Turn them loose. Why are we locking ourselves down? I don't understand that. I do know this, that this is closely tied to energy. Our society is the engine that runs it is energy. We have to have energy, and we're hungry for energy. And yet we're hearing more and more lately that we have more oil reserves, petroleum reserves, and natural gas than Saudi Arabia, and we've always admired them. We're paying trillions of dollars over a few years' time to buy so much of our imported oil. Uh, American private enterprise is drilling like crazy, but it, I heard our president say that we are drilling more than ever. We is not the government. The government's locked out the federal lands. We need to be turning the private sector loose in Anwar, the, the shale in the Rocky Mountains, the offshore, the Gulf, the deep wells. I worry about what happened to BP. I'm not sure that was above board, but it certainly shut down the offshore drilling and production. And where are we getting that oil to replace it? Oh, let's see. We're buying it from the Middle East countries and spending our national treasure to feed our need for fuel. We're going to have to have fuel. Turn the energy loose. Get the pipeline built from Canada. Get every reserve in America humming. Then we've got millions of jobs. The trickle-down effect from just the people who get all that oil coming up is amazing. There's more people earning money, more people spending money, more people paying taxes without raising taxes, and our economy's back sizzling again the way it's meant to be in our Constitution 
and in our private sector, uh, the freedoms that we have is what got us here today. Out here in the country where we say dance with the one that brung you, and that means in short terms, let's get back to the way that took us to success. Let's get back to where we have a free enterprise system, personal liberties and freedoms and choices to be creative and productive like we as Americans are proud to say we do. Look at our country and compare it with the third world countries or even the more industrialized countries. We're in great shape still. We're a powerful place. We've got a powerful people. The point is we need to target this back to becoming one nation, indivisible, together as a family, facing the outside world. We're being looked at hungrily. We have countries now that are willing to test us. They're testing our will. This recent thing in Libya was nothing but a test of our will. Embarrass us? Yes, it did a great job of embarrassing. Demoralize us? Yes, it demoralized us. But it also made a lot of us mad. Ask any veteran about the policy of leaving one of your comrades behind, and you'll hear how stupid and inexcusable and disgusting and repulsive it was to have that operation go this way when we had resources available to save everybody in there probably. During the pitched battle of nearly seven hours, we lost a CIA agent in the last few minutes of that little skirmish that could have easily been saved in the previous five hours with resources that close and available. I don't understand it. This is a war. It's not a war on terror. It's basically a war on Islam. If you're not part of the friendship group, then you're probably part of the enemy. Stand up and be counted in those countries. Control your jihadists and your extremists and your radicals. We control people here that are out of line. That's why we have a prison system, a judicial system, and a death penalty. But, you know, we can't allow countries to just simply run roughshod over other countries. The whole world depends on the United States and its strength. How many countless millions of people has we freed from horrible lives? Better health, better democracy, better everything. But when a country continues to fail over and over again after draining our resources, it's time to back away and let them settle their differences internally or get rid of them. I mean, I'm a hawk. You might tell that. But we can't play with political correctness. We can't play with rules when the people that are hating our guts and trying to kill us and blow us all up all around the world have no rules. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. We, we go into a battle, a war, with one hand tied behind our troops. We're not supposed to win. We're supposed to be politically correct and walk away when the time is right and we've trained them to take care of themselves. Many of these countries will never take care of themselves because their neighbors will make sure of that. But in essence, we spend our national treasures and, more importantly, our blood resources from brave young men and women. Can't keep doing it. we got to toughen up. we got to get internalized to where we're one nation, presenting ourselves as a common front, a mutual front. Forget our internal divisiveness. We don't need that. We can't handle it. It's not the time in history to do it. We'll settle all these out later. With a new regime, a new government in place, new people, new ideas, and someone who loves the private sector and is willing to build it up, turn it loose, let its engines run full blast and get us out of this mess we're in, we'll be okay. We may have to make, we will have to make sacrifices, all of us, but we've got to get our country back on a leap even scale and headed in the right direction. Like I said in program one, we are on a fast track to the gates of hell. Does anybody think we can afford the health care program the way it is? No, we can't. Do you think we can handle more entitlement, more voter fraud and registration problems and issues? I say if someone in Alabama or Ohio or New York steals a vote or cheats like Congressman Rand's son was doing there in Virginia, oh, uh, we got a sting on him, an hour's worth of recording teaching this guy who is the cameraman to how to cheat and how to fix utility bills and go vote. Not once, but a hundred times he had a list of a hundred people he was going to represent. One vote cast like that is stealing your vote. You should never put up with it. You've got to be as mad as hell, and you're not going to put up with it anymore. You're not going to take it. We have to get mad during the next week and save this election Take our country back. It is our country. I said last time, it's of the people, for the people, by the people. And that consent has been trampled on by our Congress and by especially our administration. There's no point in that. We cannot do it. We have. To, I'm not suggesting anybody protest or anybody go out and riot. I'm certainly not suggesting the rights of your congressman because you've got two chances 
to get a meaningful and honest response back from your congressman, slim and none. We can vote and we can take power under the order of law and vote these people out of office, get rid of them. We've got to take the Senate, we've got to have the House, and we've got to have the administration to correct our country. I don't care if you like people. It's not a matter of that. This is a matter of saving our society and our culture as we know it. For some reason, Americans think we're exempt from that. It's going to happen to someone else, not me, not my family. Every democracy in history has failed at about the time we are right now. A couple hundred years, 250, 300. We're not exempt from that. You can see the deterioration in our hope, our believability, our credibility in ourselves. We're failing. Why? Because we can't afford ourselves. We're getting less productive. We're letting other countries eat us up in school and education, learning and science and math. We're, 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 we're starting to play games with ourselves and get decadent. So many young people don't even know what the issues are and don't care. They're so busy caught up in the world of computers that that's their life. They have no interest in seeing that we save our country. We have to save our country. So I'm going to repeat, I am mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore, and neither should you. Those of us who still have sanity and love our country and grew up here and absolutely are zealot patriots, we love our states, we love our place, we love our, our homes and our families, and we love all Americans who are true Americans, then in essence we need to band together and vote these rascals out of office. It's happened throughout history. Our founding fathers would not believe the Constitution being trampled on this way. If you've never read it, you didn't get it in school, it's so available right now. It's, it's just there for the taking. Read it. There's little pamphlets and booklets on the Internet. In the age of computers, you can research every bit of these things I'm talking about and realize don't be fooled. Don't be duped. We're being treated like mushrooms. We're kept in the dark and we're fed BS. And that's the way our government looks at us. We're pawns. We have no sense. We're morons. And they can trample on us and we won't band together and we won't speak in unison. And they continue to suck our freedoms right out of our guts. I'm tired of that. I want you to be tired of it. I want you to go to the polls. I want you to take your family and friends and strangers and co-workers, anybody, and let's get this regime out of office. We have to do it. Four more years, we're not going to be free. I don't think we'll have free elections. They'll be rigged. They'll be 51, 55% of the people on entitlements. What's that going to do? They're all going to vote the right way and keep us from continuing our freedoms as a free country. I, for one, am not going to put up with that because I am mad as hell. I'm trying to make you understand by putting my life on the line in here, I believe firmly in what we're doing. I believe that these things have to be solved, and this is our best final chance to do it. I have total fear of what my country is going to look like in just a few years. I'm totally repulsed by what all the freedoms have been sucked out quietly in the dark of night in a transparent administration that we were promised. And we wake up two or three weeks later because the media has been bought. They don't. They cover our president. They cover our commander-in-chief. They don't report the fair news. I'm challenging you. Between now and the election, you listen to one conservative talk show for one hour. I don't care whether it's Rush Limbaugh, Sean Hannity, my man Mark Levin, any of your local conservative talk show people. Listen for one hour and then go find a liberal talk show and make your decision. I don't want to influence your vote other than to say we got to save our country. Study the issues. Go out and find what is the truth to you. And I think you'll see that by listening to some of these folks on the, on the air, we've got men and women who are brilliant that stay tuned to this. I'm just an old rancher out here in the country, but I got your attention with all these snakes. Now, I want to tell you, the importance of voting is very, very clear. Don't think your vote doesn't count. I hear that all the time. I also hear people saying, I wish somebody would get up there and talk about such and such. If I had that microphone, I'd tell them how this should work. Well, they don't do it. The Sunshine Patriots are there when the weather's good and everything's working fine. Dark clouds come in and problems develop and they vaporize and disappear. I came out here because I think this was a calling. I literally had voices telling me, you've got this bully, bully pulpit versus a snaky pulpit, and I am. I'm putting my life on the line. Any one of these snakes could kill me, folks but I believe in what I'm doing. I want you to believe me. We're going to have more programs coming up, and we want you to tune in to snakerant.com. Please, this is not inexpensive to do. 
maintaining our snakes, collecting the snakes, working with our expensive production crews, uh, doing our research, the, the set, and the, the rental of our place. All of that costs, and a lot more costs involved, too. Do you think we need insurance? Huh? So, in essence, I want you to make donations, $5, 10 $20. If you make a $20 donation to Snake Rant, it really helps us maintain these programs. We want to carry a series of this all the way past the election. We're not sure what we'll name it, but we're going to hold someone's feet to the fire or someone's mm -hmm, to the fire and make them live up to their campaign promises and the pledges they've made and help us reshape America as the people we are when we speak in unison, demanding our government back, demanding it to be responsive, demanding it to get us back on track the way we all love our country and the way it should be by rights and by our founding fathers' good forethought. So get out there and vote. Make a donation to us at snakerant.com. We'll keep this series going long after the elections are over. But right now, again, we have to win this election. The people of America need to band together and blow this regime out of the tub through the normal election process. We have to be overwhelming to let people know in the future we will not put up with this again. Me, I'm still mad as hell right now, and I'm not going to put up with it anymore. You shouldn't either. It's our country, folks. Join us again for another snakerant.com coming up pretty quick. And I want to tell you, I've really enjoyed this program. I'm nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs. It's not fun. I probably feel like I'm debating mm, uh, perhaps our administration, but you notice no teleprompters, no notes, all ad-libbed. It may have rambled a little, but by gosh, we did it without any help. I love America. God bless all Americans, and let's band together as one family. The little things that divide us don't count. Let's get together and vote this regime out of office. Please, I pray that we can. God bless you.